Mirror's Edge is a unique first-person shooter made by DICE, the developers behind Battlefield. Seeking a reprieve from the browns and greys of war-torn wastelands, they sought to assault the senses with a richly colored world and an innovativeness rarely seen in the AAA games industry. Mirror's Edge is a game about parkour, an exercise of maneuvering through an environment in the most efficient way possible, primarily by running, jumping, rolling, swinging, and a wide variety of other words ending in ing. While the game is often described as a shooter, it would be more accurate to call the game a first-person platformer. The game's primary challenge comes from observing the environment and identifying the best way to traverse it. Effectively doing so creates a brilliant sense of flow most games can never hope to achieve. While running onto a platform, only to quickly jump off it and perfectly time a safety roll onto the next platform, while maintaining speed throughout, is an immensely satisfying experience. A less satisfying experience, however, are many of the contextual controls. Being able to string together a combo of parkour maneuvers is often hampered by the exactness the game demands. Hitting anything from an angle tends to be clunky, or not work at all. Furthermore, the character tends to get caught on the environment constantly, whether it's edges of walls or random pipes on the ground. I believe this is mostly due to the game rendering of the character's body with physical properties. Most first-person games fail to give players legs, let alone proper collision or natural movement. In some ways, it's impressive for DICE to have done this, but it would have been better for the game to have fudged some of the details. If legs clipping through the environment can lead to a better experience, I suggest letting them clip. This problem can be forgiven as the player is bound to get used to it by being more deliberate with their actions, but it never feels fun to get caught on random obstacles the first person perspective makes difficult to see. However, I wouldn't want to trade the first person view in for anything, even if those issues are to persist. This perspective is, by its very nature, immersive. With a minimalistic HUD only consisting of an optional dot reticle, it becomes very easy to be drawn into the world of Mirror's Edge, and to be further captivated by the parkour action. It truly feels like the player is accomplishing these acrobatic feats, which would be much less so if framed in third person, even though a third person view would likely make performing those feats easier. It is a quandary. Not a quandary, however, is the poor quality of combat. Every so often, the game's seamless sense of free-flowing parkour is halted by clunky shootouts. The player can choose to fight hand-to-hand, -hand, or can disarm opponents and take their guns to return fire. Hand-to-hand -hand combat looks neat, but lacks any sense of feedback. It often boils down to violently mashing buttons in hopes of success. It's better to grab a gun, but aiming tends to be stiff. Most weapons slow the player down to walking speed while restricting parkour actions. This does make sense, of course, but the game about parkour should be about parkour. It's more fun to leap from rooftop to rooftop than it is to be bogged down by fighting. Even if fighting were made to feel better and on par with other shooters, it would still clash with the rest of the game. It would be more fun if fighting were not an option, with the player encouraged to escape their foes through superior athleticism. It's unfortunate, except for this part where you kick a guy off of a roof. That part was pretty cool. The story of Mirror's Edge is interesting, but it fails to be truly noteworthy. The plot revolves around an unnamed city where an Orwellian government heavily monitors all forms of communication and daily life in order to detect dissent. Some entrepreneurial parkour enthusiasts evidently took to delivering messages and packages back and forth so to protect their customers from government supervision. The player assumes the role of one of these runners, Faith. Faith's sister, Kate, happens to be a cop who was framed for the murder of a mayoral candidate who promised to end the surveillance state. Faith then goes on a journey of conspiracy and intrigue in order to find the real murderer and free her sister. The game's plot follows some very predictable patterns inherent in these kinds of tales. The writing itself is consistently competent, with a pleasant charm mixed in with its conspiracy drama. I could do without the cartoon cutscenes. The animation just seems weird to me, especially the way characters move with an uncanny smoothness. Other than that, the game's aesthetics are extraordinary. Mirror's Edge is worth playing through due to its visuals alone. They are jaw-dropping pretty. The use of bright contrasting colors makes the game a showpiece of minimalist art. The game's visuals are also implemented in such a way as to help direct the player through the game. With interactive elements and correct pads highlighted in red set against a blinding white, it makes running not only seamless, but beautiful as well. The game truly looks like no other game. Mirror's Edge is a fantastic, but very flawed game. Its unique gameplay and visuals are constantly undermined by any number of reasons, but despite its many issues, it's still a blast to play. Even all these years later, the gameplay still feels fresh and interesting. If there is any game deserving of a sequel to take its ideas and refine them to perfection, it would be Mirror's Edge. Fingers crossed.